We've come to a beautiful spot in the parish of St. George to find this vine. And I'll tell you why. On Sailor's Valentines, though especially those that were made in Barbados, um, only two types of seed are found. Only two types of seeds were used. Both are red seeds and they go by the names Jumbi bead and crab eye. And here is a crab eye vine growing up here over this, this plant. Um, the crab eye has a little pod and when the pod opens you can see the bright red seeds with the black eye spots on them looking very much like uh, the eyes of some crazy crab. These plants have very many names. The scientific name is Abrus precatorius and that reminds me right away that these seeds are supposed to be extremely toxic. Okay, um, when, um, when, the, when you know how to prepare them, you can extract a toxin which is very dangerous. But in some island traditions, these beans are actually roasted for coffee. Um, I don't know how safe that is, but you know, I thought I'd let you know. We ask ourselves, why were they so valuable? Why did they incorporate them into uh, Sailor's Valentines? Well, first of all, you have the eye spot. And that, that, seems, that seems to be very telling. Uh, these um, are sometimes called the eyes of God. Uh, in the Orisha tradition of Cuba, they are called the Ojos de Eshu, right? That's the eyes of the Orisha spirit Eshu. That gives you the sense that um, the spirits are watching over the person. And so sometimes these beads would be strung into necklaces and wristbands and even anklets. Those older um, folks had anklets as well. And um, they're very hard, so that's not easy. They have to be boiled a little to soften them and then pierced with a needle to be strung into a necklace. Another thing that we associate these beads with in our culture is the kerosene lamp. Sometimes these ones were put into the kerosene of the lamp. And the older folks, uh, if you were to ask them why is that bead in the kerosene lamp, might not give you a straight answer. They'd usually say something like, it makes the oil last longer. It used to be believed that the, the flame, the, the lighting of the lamp with these beads in it would repel evil from the household. In Jamaica, these, these seeds go by the name John Crow bead. And John Crow is the turkey vulture, right, which uh, feasts on dead animals. Uh, in Trinidad and Barbados, uh, that would be called the cubber. There's that phrase in Barbados, you is a cubber. An amazing similarity to crab eye. Is there something there? Right, kaba, crab eye, who knows? Now, in some countries, the crab eye is called jumbi bead. Right? So that's a little confu confusion there because in Barbados, another seed, another red seed altogether is called jumbi bead or jumbi seed, and we'll show that to you. We go back to Africa. We find that the jumbi beads are used very widely in art and even in mosaic art very much in the way they're laid out on the box of the sailor's valentine right all the seeds next to each other sometimes a mask might be covered with just a couple of jumbi beads around the eyes or over the whole mask and this is particularly the case in the masks of the the ajumba uh, masks of the Jola people in Senegambia. Right? The um, Ejumba seed gives the name to the mask, the Ejumba mask, and it is worn by young men at initiation into adulthood. So a very significant time. The mask with the Jumbi beads all over it offers protection 
just as we suggested uh, for the Sailor's Valentines. Placing these on Sailor's Valentines might have been one way to say, I am offering protection to my loved one. I'm offering protection to the person who receives this, right? But beyond that, they are so beautiful, right? They help to make the, the box very attractive. They stand out against the white of the shells. My name is Debbie Ann Edwards. I'm a designer. My main art form is in the design of handbags. I've been doing it from 2002. I started handbags from 2002 before I worked with clothing. Um, I first heard of the Sailor's Valentines. I got a phone call asking if I was interested in doing a project with Sailor's Valentines. I had never heard about it before. So I did research and I was like, interesting. I realized that it was, it started in the Barbados. At my age, I had never heard anything about it. Apparently that art form was just, it just was removed from memory. It wasn't taught, nothing. And when I did the research on it, I liked. And I wanted to do it because I wanted to bring back that energy in my work. It took me back, I, I saw, the sailors returning with the work and what I saw was love, Valentine. The octagonal shape of the sailors' Valentine came from the compass, the box that kept the compass in. So in seeing that, I knew the shape of my bags. I would do octagonal bags. And then the mahogany look, which I transformed to my bag. And most importantly, the shells. I get to walk the beach, and I walk on the beach I would, to look for shells and sea glass and what's not. I was wondering, I wonder if they were here. I wonder if they picked them from here. And I just wanted to feel that energy of them so that I can direct it into my art form. I use the burlap because it has the color of our sun. And I love working with burlap because it's a natural fiber. So where I work, I, I have a shop and I sell to tourists, I sell my bags. So the shapes I will use, the Sailor's Valentine's, I'm going to put this into my work now, especially the shapes. And I'm able, because of what I do, to tell people. So when I put my shapes and continue using shells and make this go forward for future, I'm able to tell people and explain to them what this is and teach what, what it's all about. Talk, talk about what it is and get, educate people on Sailor's Valentine's because it's part of our history that has that was was hidden. <laughs> Not anymore. Hello everyone. My name is Douglas Blackburn and I'm a shell artist. This beautiful and intricate Sailor's Valentine was made by me using hundreds and hundreds of tiny seashells to create this masterful mosaic. I would like to direct you to a couple of books written about Sailor's Valentines. The first being Sailor's Valentines by John Fondas. It comes in this unique octagonal cover and it showcases many traditional antique forms of the art craft. The second of these came in 2005, I believe, called Sailor's Valentines, Their Journey Through Time. The third is Contemporary Sailor's Valentines, Romance Revisited by Pamela Boynton, a Valentine artist herself. And more recently, Sterling Blackman's Riri and Kiki, Volume 3, The Story of Barbados and the Sailor's Valentines. And it also features one of my pieces on the front cover. Now it is my pleasure today to show each and every one of you who are watching this how to make a Sailor's Valentine. Here we are now at my center of operations. These are just some of the tools of the trade. This 
type of glue I only really tend to use when I am bonding shell flowers that have been wired. It's harder to do this with tacky glue, which is what you'll be using for the majority of your shell work. But this bonds it like iron, and you're not getting it out without damaging stuff. And you will also need some hairspray, extra cold, and this is for the dyed sand. Regarding dyed sand, no two artists are exactly alike. Every artist does something differently. But there are those of us that like to use dyed sand in our shell work. Basically, this kind of creates a map of sorts for putting down shells. I'm going to show you how to get started first. The first step is cutting out your acid-free paper. Also, something very important to note. When you get your box, make sure that the numbers on the molding strips are matched with the signs of the box. If not, you're going to have one hell of a time getting them to fit back properly. So now I take the glass and I put it onto the acid-free paper. Then, after that, I cut out the design with my scissors. So now with your shape cut out, what you then do is that you rest it down into the box, onto the shelf where the glass and the glass trim will go. And then you put the glass trim back in. With that in place, I then draw the smaller octagon, like so. And eight. Then after this is done, I cut out the excess. And there, with that done, you push it down into the box, make sure it fits nicely. If you want this done more accurately and more professionally, the folks at Fine Art Framing in Pelican Village can do it for you. And there's also another person named Shaka Rodney, I believe, in Christchurch that does it as well. Okay, now we're going to get to drawing out your design. Now the most basic way I was taught this is to take a ruler and your pencil and draw it side to side, connecting the corners. And from there, you find the center and you can use your compass, put it in the center and you can draw your circles. For example, like this. Cool. Before I go any further in teaching you how to make a stainless valentine, one thing I really want to emphasize is please, 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 please do not plagiarize other artists' work. What you see here in these books and any other resources is really and truly meant to be a guide. You know, see, look at them, seek inspiration, and be prepared to spend a lot of time and effort and thought and planning into making something that is uniquely yours. When I first became interested in Sailor's Valentines, I often used to look at the antique pieces at the Barbados Museum for inspiration. Now I'm going to start the gluing process, sticking down the design in the box. And then you fit it in. Sometimes the water in the glue can make the board distort a little bit and bend up. So what I often do is that I weigh it down with different things. So I'm putting this down here and then I wait for it to stick properly before continuing. Okay, so now that the acid-free paper has been stuck down, the next step is to start applying dyed sand to the design. So I take my paintbrush, apply some of the glue from before and start brushing it onto the sides. Now all the sides have been covered with glue. So what I do now is that I take my dyed sand and apply some onto one side like this. Then I shake it. And there you have it. Okay, now the side of my shape has been completely covered with glue. Here's what you do next 
We give you sticking sand for your shape. We pour out a generous amount of the dyed sand. And there you have it. Now you just leave it to dry. So now that we are back and that the sand has dried, the next step to ensure that the sand does not get everywhere in your design is to take some hairspray, preferably extra hold, and you spray each section that has dried sand. Like this. This seals in the sand nicely. Another note about dyed sand, after you draw down your design and decide what color shells you want, you will put the proper colored sand in the corresponding section, right? Such as this one. You could see if you look carefully that for each section with a different colored shell, I laid down dyed sand that matches the shell's color. So for this next part of making a sailor's valentine, I'm gonna show you how to make a variety of shell flowers. Okay, so the first flower I'm gonna show you how to make is a simple five petal blossom. So what you first do is that you select out some apple blossoms here. I have six, five of them. And you add in a spot of tacky glue like this. Then you start with one apple blossom here like this. And you take the second one, the second petal, and put it here gently overlapping with the first. You do the same for the third, then the fourth, and the fifth to close it out. And you have your basic flower shape. Then, the center, you take the emerald near right, and you push it in very gently. You can also poke and prod the petals till it looks just right like how you want it. So there, you have your first flower. The next flower I'm gonna show you is another simple five-petaled blossom. This one will be made of blue operculums and a yellow litterina and prod the petals. Also adjusting along the way. And there you have it. Next, I'm gonna show you how to make a rose. And you take some rose cups. I'm doing smaller roses, so I used smaller shells for the petals. Made of blue, start with seven on the bottom. And I move up into another layer. Along the way, then another. But at this point, you can push the blossom together gently with your fingers. And I take some more. And you can use your tweezers. We have your rose. I want to thank you all for watching to the very end, and I hope that you learned something about how to make this beautiful, unique Barbadian art form.